mentally lost and we're trying to keep them from going to this the evil ones who are trying to get them to go into drugs particularly mm -hmm. because they can't do anything when they fry their brains so that they can't think and uh, Chief Frazier he is the one after I had told him about um, the village of hope that I saw in Asia, in um, Italy. Italy. Mm -hmm. And um, we thought it was a good idea. And this is the room that they are in, and they make plans and programs and whatnot. Trying to get some of these, uh, as many as possible, because we can't blame the children. We blame a whole lot of folks for them to be so nonchalant and don't care and think that they, they just grew up. And I have, all, I have talked with hundreds and hundreds of people throughout the world. And when it comes to the United States, and I talk to these young people and ask them, just think right off your head about your poor parents, black people, mm -hmm. and the only thing they think about is slavery. So um, what, they, they don't see that they were great people who handed, and my, thank God for my mother and father, my mother particularly. And the things that she told us, the things that we had never thought of that Saint, she, she didn't call the name St. Augustine, but uh, black people handed civilization to the world by the way of the Nile River. And it was not too long ago that I saw the Geographic uh, magazine and they have history, some history about how civilization has become internationally known in the world. So if we can get the kids to know that you're somebody, and those are the things that she used to do, and I just tried to keep her legacy on. <laughs> well, apparently your mother was very successful. Absolutely. And, and encouraging you after uh, low these many years to still open your home to young people to get them on the right track. Right. That's quite a testimony. Right, right. And you haven't retired from it yet after oh, being almost no. 100. <laughs> you know, I think of the time that uh, the boat we took that turned over with six of us in. And um, it was because a bigger boat that the waves capsized our boat that was smaller. And I think of the time that here I am, no life jacket on, can't swim, and yet live right, in, right almost in the ocean. That's a blessing. 
And I told God, I didn't ask him, I just told him. I got too much to do. And I just can't afford to drown, God. I can't afford to drown. I got too much to do. And this is what he has given me to do, to help these young people. I guess it's just like a kid that you feed him. He said, more, more, I want some more. <laughs> <laughs> so I want, that you can't save all of them. But I still want more and more of the young people who will want to know something about yourself because we are great. And I want them to know that. <laughs> well, it's, we're very grateful uh, that, you, that you're with us to share all of your uh, wisdom and strength with these folks because uh, by the time we get them, uh, they, uh, those are the small percentage, that's the few who managed to overcome all the hardships right. and, and distractions My early God. on. But I mean, if you can reach out to them earlier than that, you know, that, that's what makes it possible. So we're, we're very grateful <laughs> for all, all of the work that, uh, that you've been doing. And we're very proud of the fact that you are an alumnus of Tuskegee University. I am too. <laughs> I am too. I was in the days when, now in my case, the things that the kids got angry about is, I can't go outside. You couldn't go outside. You had to stay within your own little coffee. Or, I don't like this food. I just took it for granted that I'm not at home, <laughs> that I'm going to do what's right, what they are going to do, and they are feeding us or where we've got to go because we didn't run around when we were mm -hmm. kids. So what, what did you major in at Tuskegee? Home economics. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, and I was employed because I had, um, I taught a little while and I was fired. <laughs> <laughs> and I look back at it now and it didn't stop where I was fired. Even 20 years afterward, I happened to meet the guy again and invited him to my house. And of course, he told the tale that he fired me because he couldn't, he resigned because he couldn't find anybody like me. But the thing about it is, being in Tuskegee, and especially in my day, you you communicated with people, you learned from people. The teachers were sent to it it, it, it was just wonderful, whatever class you went into. The, the, um, the meals that you ate, you had people that maybe you didn't see yesterday, but you saw them today. And I was young, but I tried to put everything I possibly could into wherever I was going to work. And then I was offered a job in St. Mary's, Georgia. That's across from Fernandina. And um, I tried, this school was a new school. The teachers and the principal were relatives. Here I am an outsider. Have you ever heard of being an outsider? <laughs> <laughs> I tried to put everything that I possibly could into St. Mary's school, just a little eighth teacher school. And um, when I did that, the kids had better sense than I had. More Miss Platt, look at that. I mean, every time somebody would come to the school, they would say, look what your principal did. Look at the home economics department. And I wasn't there but three or four months. Look at the ground. And it, it, she's making, and I was, I was a, a basketball player on the varsity team. And that was the main thing that I wanted to see the kids do that, plus the fact that I had them sing because I was in the choir here. You were busy. And, <laughs> 
And when, when the kids saw that, and every time a principal or a visitor came, look what your principal has done. Look how the principal thinks of you. And the kids would say, Mr. Class, that's not true. You were the one who did it. <laughs> <laughs> and then we used to have, uh, every six weeks, we used to have the county uh, teachers association. And in those days, as you know, Georgia has 167 counties, so these hundred uh, teachers. And at the end, the MC said, is there anybody who would like to have something to say? <laughs> Here goes my hand. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the students are so wonderful. They are great. But the principal won't pay any attention to me that everything we do, the principal takes responsibility. So that Saturday, that was on Saturday, on Monday, he said, Ms. Platts, why did you say that? I said, because it's true. You're fired. Mm. <laughs> mm -hmm. You're fired. But um, when I told my mother about it, she said, you're crazy. <laughs> you're crazy. That is, you could have told a man that and personally tell him, here you're telling the whole hundred and some of Oh yeah, 20 years after it, when we had Craig Field in Selma, Alabama. And uh, we had, I was married, had a real estate and insurance agency and um, we had all of the houses filled because they wouldn't let black people with families be on the, on the reservation. You had to sign somewhere else. Isn't that something? This is the government. And the guy went to the office and my husband said, we don't have any place for them and he has a child. And he, I told him that you had one room and I don't know whether you wanted the room occupied or not. So I went, uh, he said he's coming at five o'clock. At five o'clock, I was back in the office. I carried him out to the house and he said, I will take it and coming back, I said, um, where, where are you from? I'm from St. Mary's, Georgia. Oh, I taught in St. Mary's, Georgia. He said, who is your principal? I had a principal by the name of Old Tola Harris. That's my father. <laughs> then later on, the next week or two, he said, would you mind if my father were to come and see me? I said, that's great. It would be great because I had no animosity, no hate, no anything. That was me. And that was the way he was. They were all related to the whites in the community, especially those who were professionals or ran the county. So that's the time he had retired and he said, I just quit because I couldn't get anybody like you. No, that wasn't his good. But I just <laughs> accepted it. That's the way he felt about it. It was all right with me because I wasn't looking for any honors or anything like that. So that was my first professional job. <laughs> so is this your only son? This is my son. I, I, how many of them do I have? <laughs> Two and one. Everybody. That's, all of the people who are trying to help to build this nation up, particularly black people and who love black people and who will help them. They are my sons and daughters, right. and he's one of them. <laughs> and uh, the village of hope that I spoke of, oh, it wasn't, it was before you came in. I got this information from a man, a priest, who built a village of hope in order that he could get, and of course they're all white. 
this is in Germany, and uh, no, Italy. Right. I've been so many places. <laughs> so you've really traveled. But uh, I took, I got um, the information from him and had him to come down to see couldn't we establish the same thing. And eventually, I hope we are going to be able to get all of these young people who want to do something in life. All of us, as we were born, I think all of us have geniuses mm -hmm. about us. But it has to be nurtured. It has to be brought to the front where it could have the sunshine and the rain, the people who love you, the people who help you to get whatever your vocation is. So this is what we are doing now, and, and this, uh, this is the aspiration I have that we will be able to have these young people who don't want to, we don't want to go into drugs, even though it's a lot of money in it. Yes. But my integrity means more than anything else. And all we need to do, or one of the things, is to get people who are interested in these children to bring us to us. And Chief doesn't only tell them the best thing to do to keep those from, but those, those people from bringing them on the wrong side. But he also offers and gives them certain things that they may be, they might enjoy, say for instance, the skating ring or the horse race. Mississippi Mass Blues Festival. Yes, you can tell. <laughs> no, go ahead. <laughs> I take them everywhere to show them that there's a world beyond Tuskegee, Alabama. That's now go right. ahead. So when will you be 100? When's your birthday? August the 18th. <laughs> August the 18th, okay. And here, you... Will you tell them? They don't tell me anything. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. All I know is August 18th. Well, Mr. President, it's going to be on campus uh, at the Kellogg Center. Okay. And I also have a uh, request in to Dean Gray to use the chapel because we want to do a spiritual and a um, scholarship award development in her name at the mm -hmm. chapel. And then we want to move food and entertainment over to the Kellogg Center. We want to do this one in royal style and during her 96th birthday we were able to pull off a reconciliation thing with law enforcement mm -hmm. and we invited the deputies that uh, state troopers that beat her up back in 1965 uh, to her birthday celebration uh, Dallas County Sheriff's Department uh, and all of them showed mm -hmm. and came to her house and she was in the room dressing and we had about, I guess, about 10 police officers in our living room. And when she turned this corner here and saw all of those law enforcement people in our house, she described that as being the most significant part of that whole celebration mm -hmm. because that meant reconciliation from a beatdown on Edmund Pettus Bridge in 1965 by Alabama State Troopers left for dead and Sheriff Jim Clark declared that if anybody dead, that the buzzers eat them. And as the people said, if you don't do something with that person who's over there, we're going to burn the town down. And so we, I just couldn't let her leave here with that bit of pill because I love law enforcement. That's my foot, that's my career, retired. I love my people. And I had to have some reconciliation between law enforcement and this beautiful queen before she left here. So that was just monumental uh, in that experience. Well, we will look. Now they, they came here and escorted me to the high school. They gave a royal escort. And okay. they were from Selma, Alabama. They were, uh, you had the, the police department, the sheriff, and the state trooper. And the same thing here. And, but you arranged it. But you, for you. Well, I, I'm thinking about your being ahead of it because 
is in the lower, low, the law enforcement office. <laughs> Well, if I can ever be of any service, you know how to get in touch with me. And we live right here in this town, for sure, yeah. at Tuskegee University. Right. And uh, I hope, I'm gonna have to check to see if I'm in town uh, for your birthday. Am I or am I not? Let's see. But, uh, August we want, the 18th, when? On Thursday. Okay. That's on Thursday. Thursday. Right. Okay. So, but at any rate, uh, anything we can do to assist in that uh, grandiose celebration, let us know, okay? And uh, truly appreciate your, your being a representative of Tuskegee University I love as a you. grand alumna. <laughs> the <laughs> and, oldest and, one now. Wow. And uh, so uh, on Edmund Peters Bridge, that's the famous civil rights march that yes. you were involved in. Yes. Wow. That's where we got the right to vote mm -hmm. and the civil rights bill. Yeah. Well, that is a right that we try to teach people that a vote less people is a hopeless people. And we were hopeless in those days. Mm -hmm. They could kill you. I've known too many people whose property had been taken away and they could do nothing about it. Mm -hmm. So that's why I think that's, that, that's why people who had been cheated so made me feel that they were hopeless. But you can do something about, about it. And we're dead, almost dead now. And they have Rose, an uh, attorney, no, yes, he's an attorney too. That's uh, Hank Sanders, who is the representative. Uh, the senator. He's a senator. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have his wife, who is an attorney and has done a beautiful job. But those people are so hopeless because they will not, they will not cooperate. Mm -hmm. So now, the um, gateway educational foundation out of Atlanta is going to use my house to make a museum out of it because anybody who came to Selma to work with Dr. King, including Dr. King, including, uh, oh, I can't remember all of the other people who came. Mary there. Beth Bethune. Mary Dr. Brad George Brad Washington Matthew Carver, those folks. but all of them came through mm -hmm. that house. Wow. So they're going to make it a museum mm -hmm. and a wax museum. Wow. Well, thank you so much for your hospitality. Thank and, you. And for the honor of uh, your sharing your stories with us. And we look forward to a long and uh, productive collaboration. Thank you. Thank you so much. So much. I feel mama where did you go the last child was it a long way from home I said a long way from home a long 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 a long way from home a long way from home from home long Sometimes I feel like I'm almost gone. Sometimes I feel like I'm almost gone. Sometimes I feel like I'm almost gone. A long way from home. I said, away in the water. 
dancing away in the water, 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 waiting, 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 it, waiting, it, waiting, 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 waiting,